What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy B Hot Radio Shout in. Hey, man, I got a young man in this thing that's tearing up the TV, the big screen, and everything else as we speak. Miles Truett, what's good with it, boss? What's good, big guy? You straight? You straight? Man, feeling good, feeling great. Now, I mean, Miles, first of all, I mean, I look up, I'm on Instagram, and all I see is Summer Walker handing you breakfast in this up, thing. So. Up, <laughs> up. <laughs> Life got to be good with that going on, man. Nah, Talk that was me. fun. That was fun filming. That was very on the fly, too. I really wasn't even supposed to. To film that video the mm. the crazy story about it is Meech just called me yeah and was like hey summer's uh model or love interest had canceled on her and yeah. um, she's looking for somebody and, and i didn't really think i was you know what i'm saying the fit for it but um <laughs> hey he saw something different <laughs> Come and, on. Um, and apparently at that time they was talking with each other so yeah. he was real cool that was real cool of him to like look out for me and look out for her at the same time and uh put us together in the video so it was fun though Miles, I mean, first of all, sir, you're on fire here in these streets, man. I mean, how are you dealing with all of this fame and attention that you got going on right now, boss? Fame is fame is a big word. I, um, maybe attention, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's cool being well-known, you yeah. know, walking wa- walking down five points and the yeah. water boys fucking with me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm from the east side and, okay. and I grew up on the west side doing okay. theater and stuff, so... yeah. I'm always at the West End Mall and getting my American Deli wings. And Come on now, Asian grandma. She already, she already with me all exactly. the time. You know, so it's cool though. I, I love being that local, you know, well-known person, and uh, it's it's fun. It's fun. When it comes to your, you know, artistic ability and stuff, at what point did you realize that, hey man, this acting thing is for me? When I couldn't play basketball and I didn't uh, have the opportunity to, my yeah. mom said I could do theater camp. <laughs> 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 and uh, I ended up jo- enjoying it and learned the basics and logistics of just acting and enunciating my words. And like we exactly. were talking about earlier, just being comfortable in front of large audiences and being on stage and yeah. knowing you only have one opportunity not to mess up. And um, I transitioned that energy to film, and mm-hmm. um, that's how I got here. Okay, BMF, man. B Mickey. Mm-hmm. I mean, what was that like playing that character for you? First of all, how did you even get the part on BMF? And mm-hmm. just take me uh, from that point right there. Well, um, the showrunner, Randy Huggins, yeah. um, he's he was watching me since I was a little kid. Mm. Black Lightning, yeah. Queen Sugar, okay. um, even Atlanta, mm-hmm. and New Edition Story. And yeah. um, him just watching me as a kid, he just grasped like just a niche towards me and just like had a, a craving for what I had more yeah. um, in, in this industry in my career so um, he pitched um, I, th- I, fir- I think I first auditioned for Terry mm-hmm. and um, they sent me back the audition for B Mickey and um, they loved it mm-hmm. and um, first season went down it was great I got the opportunity to have a little more camera time in my career yeah. um, being able to you know, just show my chops a little more. Come on and, um, now. And then the second season, it just really took off, and I love the response and reaction from the audience, you know, because mm-hmm. it's such a real story, and it's a true story as well, but it's a relatable story, too. Everybody that acts, though, Miles, don't get an opportunity to be a part of something that large. You see what I'm saying? Something that, you know, kind of takes television by storm. I didn't even know it was going to be that big. I didn't even know it was, like... It had the same impact New Edition story had for me. You know, I yeah. only knew about Belle Biv DeVoe. Yeah. You know, and the next thing I know, we do a three-night sto- a three night biopic, and it has 24.7 <laughs> million views afterwards. You got five-year-olds singing Telephone Man. Come on. You know, so going you know, back to BMF, I only knew about the Rick Ross song, you know, I'm Big Meat. <laughs> Larry Hoover, you know, and um, just only hearing that and growing up hearing that as a kid, I never really, like, attached both stories together yeah. and understood where that really slogan came from. Exactly. And um, yeah, so th- that, that was really cool. Similar to the New Edition story, that BMF story, you had to be there to understand. So New Edition, for my mama them and for my older uh, uncles and stuff like that, that was the Jackson 5 for them, okay? What? Oh yeah, I you bet it was. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that was the Jackson 5 for them. I was alive and well during the BMF time. I remember seeing all that stuff going crazy first time. Mm. So it was like, no, that was a time to be alive in Atlanta. Yeah, so, you were here when they. So you were exactly. here when they came no, to I Atlanta. I was in college. I was 
that was during that crunk era that we was talking about earlier, yeah. man. I mean, the clubs was off the damn chain. Atlanta had never, Atlanta would never be the same as that right there because it was a party Monday through Sunday in this thing, okay? Mm. It was clubs lining up and down the streets. <laughs> Peachtree Street nigga was like Freak Nick back in the day still, and we would leave the club sweating, sir, okay? <laughs> yeah. You have on your long ass white tee, and you would leave that club with that thing stuck to your back. So, Okay, being in there and having to embody these characters and stuff like that, what was the training like getting prepared to play B. Mickey? And was it hard for you to grasp that character? Um, I wouldn't say it was hard. It was like it, it was uh, it was challenging. Yeah. As as an actor, you are portraying a person that that's not you twelve to fourteen hours out of your day every day for it could pertain to three months it could pertain to two years yeah and um when it comes down to that you only have eight to seven hours to come back home to go to sleep or be yourself yeah and sometimes you can lose yourself My in God. characters um Heath Ledger yeah. with the Joker you know come on now um Taraji B Henson and Hitty Fi- uh, Hidden Figures yeah. you know um so like w- with that being said uh I had to find myself and find the good accolades and the tributes with you know what I'm saying B Mickey not yeah. only he can cook crack but he was a cool person <laughs> exactly um he had swag yeah. you know he had charisma about yeah. him he had drive mm-hmm. um he was funny at that times you yeah. know uh and those things about him I could relate with okay you know and um I, w- I didn't have the fortunate opportunity to talk to the real person yeah you know be mickey like everybody else did to talk to their person that the real person that they were portraying but um i just really had to just gain information from the dialogue and gain, gather more context as much as needed to just make the character real and relatable as a person that that they can watch it and see themselves in it be mickey is a character that you see every day on on the corner mm-hmm. and you never know what that person story that they go home to yeah. or the people that they go home to or experiences exactly. or situations that they go home to. Exactly. And I was able to, you know, put that on display with that character. I mean, being on set with Snoop Dogg, though, man. Yeah. I mean, Snoop said that B. Mickey was his favorite, favorite character, character in this thing, yep. man. Yep. I, I, wish, I wish I had, like, a tape recorder so I could, like, <laughs> you know, have that as proof. But, yeah, man, he said that. You know, I remember I called him. Uh, it was his last day on set. I think yeah. it was filming season one. And um, he was leaving out of his trailer, and I was getting in my car, getting ready to go home with my driver. And uh, he had a flight at the time, and I wanted to just get a picture. I didn't have any scenes with him. Yeah. Um, I didn't really, the only time I really was close to talking to him was on a table read on Zoom on my MacBook. Yeah. So, like, seeing him in person and just, like, just feeling his essence and yeah. just, yeah, it, it was fun. And I was like, yo, like, honestly, God, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying I want to be on death row, but, like, <laughs> if I can spit something for you real quick. <laughs> He was like, quit playing, man. Yeah. I was like, nah, honestly, like, you're, you're a legend. And I love you. He was like, yeah. you don't need no, you're my favorite character, man. My I God. was like, yeah, that's what's up. Can I get a picture? He was like, for sure, for sure. I was my like, God. all right, that's what's up. And did he pass you the blunt afterwards? Ah, <laughs> you know what's crazy? Um, no, he didn't. He was he was actually literally getting ready to get in the car to go okay. to go to his you know a flight. So he yeah. had to catch a flight at that time, which is crazy. I didn't, I didn't catch him with a blunt in his mouth yeah. on his hand. He always have it, you know. Pass the Swift prize smoke too. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, have you been able to talk to Fifty during this time, man? Um, I, you know, he's like he's like Casper on set. Yeah, you know, he's here and there, but when he's there, he's very hands on. He's down to earth. Um, I respect him because he knows what he wants. Yeah, um, coming from an environment that's so foreign from then the entertainment business as far as film, yeah. um, him being a rapper, transitioning that to being an actor, mm-hmm. and then moving that energy into being a director and producer is phenomenal. Yeah. And then just being around him, just being a sponge and absorbing that energy, um, it was just really cool to meet him and just work with him. And uh, he has like such a sinister smile though. Like when he, <laughs> like it's it's very intimidating when he smiles at you. But you know it's all love. Exactly. <laughs> the brotherhood on set though, man. I mean, what is that like? The camaraderie. Shoot, not even the brotherhood. It's like a family reunion on set with mm. everybody. Every time you come on set, it's like a family reunion. We be yeah. playing spades in between cuts of scenes. Yeah. You know, talking shit. You know, with Russell <laughs> Horns being Steve Harris. 
um, it's 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 great. I feel like that's what makes the story so like authentic and just yeah. real and grasping because everybody on set fucks with each other so much, mm-hmm. and the chemistry is there. And when the chemistry is there between actors and actresses, mm-hmm. and the relationship is so like healthy, it, it, it just moves the scenes so you know smoothly. Mm-hmm. And um, I was, and that's very it's rare. It's yeah. rare you find that. It's yeah. rare you find that. Um, and, and and both Meech and DaVinci were like big brothers from the, to me, yeah. And just like you know mentors, and uh, I appreciate them too. Being on set though, can you feel the tension from the scene on set, and does it transfer to the television screen when you go back to watch it? Tension from the scene, like like pertaining to what, like what you mean? Like if you got to go kill your girlfriend, and you think to yourself, this is about to be a stressful ass day today, and then you watch it on the show on television. Do I like relive it? Do you relive it? But then also, do you feel that same energy from being on set, offset when you watch it, uh, watching the replay of everything? Like my feeling towards it? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I could say the main scene that I still have feelings for towards is when I killed Kato. Yeah. I killed my baby. Um. I really <laughs> didn't. I, I really didn't want to kill Kato in yeah. real time as Miles yeah. Truitt and B. Mickey. I feel like he didn't want to do it too, but he yeah. had to. Um. Sustain his loyalty, yeah, and um, also just survive. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like yeah. it wasn't just really the loyalty, but if he didn't kill her, he was gonna be the next. Exactly. Um, and then I felt some type of way about that too. Like it would've been cool to have another female in mm-hmm. the group. You know, just seeing how long we could, you know, pursue that type of story. Mm-hmm. Um, having that love interest type of side of the story and making yeah. it, you know. Universal all around as a, as a, as a show, mm-hmm. and not just all killing and and, and yeah. family and stuff like that. But um, the fact that there is a female and there's love, you know, what I'm saying, and the back end of it, mm-hmm. um, that would have been cool to have in BMF. You know, yeah. you have Lucille, you have Charles, you have their relationship, but you got the the triangle effect with uh titties on his back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, it would have been cool to just see a real love story. You know, yeah. in the midst of all the mayhem. Exactly. You know. Do you watch the show at home when it comes out with everybody else? Or are you like, you know what, I'm all out from this show. I ain't watching shit. I watch it by myself. Okay. I watch it by myself. I like to investigate. I like to see what I can pick up on, what I didn't do, um, what I did do well, mm-hmm. um, what I rushed on. You know, mm. I watch a lot of movies and you know there's lines, but they don't rush them. Yeah. And when you rush a line, you rush a beat, you rush a moment. Yeah. Um, when there's pauses, like, in real time, like, yeah. like we're having a conversation now, it's it sounds real. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But when you just said exactly, that would have been a line. But if mm. you would have said it too quickly, it would have sounded robotically. Uh, so like that's how I really like, you know, just the science. pick up. You know, that's mm-hmm. just the science of how yeah. I watch myself. And I, I don't really, I, I watch it with my family, but mm-hmm. that would be probably like the second time I'm seeing the episode. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know I'm what I mean? You. But it's, we, it's always the second time when you see something else that you didn't see the first time. Yeah. So. Stranger Things and BMF, going from the gangster world to the supernatural, what is that like making that change every five minutes? That's crazy you said that because I was filming season one of BMF the same time I was filming season four of Stranger Things. My God. Let's say I was on set for BMF Monday through Wednesday, and Thursday, Friday, I'm on set for Stranger Things. You know, Uh, it it was fun just trying to, like, Diverse myself between the yeah. two characters. Um, you have a, a character that cooks crack, is a gangbanger, that, that kills, <laughs> he fucks, he, he cusses, he does all that. Then you have this pretty boy, basketball, <laughs> small forward. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nin- 1986. Yeah. You know, but that's cool too. That it wasn't hard. That it wasn't challenging to you know what I'm saying to depict, depict between those two characters because they were in the same time Man. zone too. Yeah. So I was listening to the same music. I was yeah. still in the same clothes. I was yeah. I still had the same swag, you yeah. know. So that really helped me like mix the two characters together and make sure it wasn't too challenging for me to go back and forth from back, you know what I'm saying, each each each, each other character. Yeah. But um yeah, when it came to Patrick, you know, I was doing a lot of things on Stranger Things that I wasn't doing on on BMF, like doing stunts. Like there was one time where they built this thirty foot. It's crazy. They built it in this um, what 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 are the, what what's it called? A studio space. 
They they built it in this studio space, a thirty foot water tank, and they had mm. eight scuba divers scuba divers in it, and they built a set underneath. And like if you look underneath the water, there's like a whole built set. Yeah. And the whole theme of season four was there was an underworld. Yeah. And that was basically the underworld at the time. And um, my that was like my killing scene. I get pulled under by um, the whole antagonist of the story yeah um i get pulled under the water and i come back up and my body just like is dismantled and everything <laughs> and um that was really that was a really cool scene that was like that whole scene was one week my god just to get that one scene so um that was that would be that that's like the difference between you know stranger things and yeah. bmf but yeah Personally, though, man, I mean, that was an exciting and busy-ass time. What was it like being that damn busy? Was it a dream come true for you saying, okay, I am out here working in this thing? Mm -hmm. Or was it a bit overwhelming at the same time? It, I, wanna say, it was, I don't know. I don't know because I feel like I never really realized my blessings until, like, somebody is telling me mm. I'm going through it right then and there. You know what I'm saying? I'll be just be living life and... I'm thinking that it's just supposed to be coming towards me yeah. and, until I see myself on TV, mm -hmm. you know, or until I tell, hear somebody saying, oh, you're doing such a great job, or I just watched you. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I'm working. I'm, I'm, I'm progressing. I'm going towards yeah. something in the future. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm doing something with my life. Um, and then what was the second question you asked? Oh, uh, was it overwhelming? <sighs> Mental stability as an actor, that's big. Break uh, that down, man. Like I said, 14, 12 hours, you're portraying somebody that you're not every yeah. day, all day. And um, being able to sit and just mental stability. So that's 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 my big part of acting because I got to know myself. Mm -hmm. I got to know what I like. I got to know who my family is, who my yeah. peers are, who is in my circle. Yeah. You know, I can't be influenced by my characters and what they do because yeah. that's something that I am acting. That's something that is a, a facade, you mm -hmm. know. So, yeah. But what is it that you love the most about acting, though, man? And what is it that you hate the most? I love about them uh, the thing I love most about acting is the fact that I get to travel a lot I get mm -hmm. to meet a lot and a lot of people that I grew up watching yeah. or never would have thought I would have met um I come from stage mm -hmm. so the fact that I have an outlet to express myself um film gives me that too mm -hmm. um I want to do more than just acting I want to direct I want to be a creative director I want to start writing you know and to do that, you have to be exposed to that, and acting does that for me. While I'm on set, when they say cut, I don't always go back to my trailer. Mm -hmm. I might go sit in Studio Village and ask for a pack and a headset, and let yeah. me watch this next scene. I feel and you. Just be a sponge, you know, yeah. behind the writer, director, showrunner, whoever is right there. Ask questions, you know. Don't be don't be afraid to ask questions. I get you on that. Um, main thing I probably don't like about acting is probably the hours, you yeah. know, but I can't complain about that because it's work at the end of the day. Nice. And um, it, the, the day goes by, you know, when I'm enjoying it and I, I love it and it's mm -hmm. a passion for mine. Say, okay, I got into the game as a young actor, but now I'm in here grown, experiencing the industry politics at the same time and navigating this new world. How's that part been for you? It's been it's been a little bit different, and I'm I'm educating myself more as I go on. I started out as a kid. I started yeah. out when I was about twelve years old. Mm -hmm. I was new edition story. Yeah, and um, I was going against a lot of child actors. Um, I had to bank hours for school. Or they so they had to pay for a teacher on set. So mm. me not knowing that, I was going against. I was going against older people mm. that are playing younger roles. Look at High School Musical. Yeah. All those cats was not 18, <laughs> at all. 17 years old. They was 24, 23, cut yeah. their beard off, boom, let's put you as a senior. Come on. So at, with that being said, I was 12 going against 18. Grown-ass man. You feel me? Yeah. So it would be it was harder to, to book roles. Yeah. But then once I hit 18, mm. didn't have to pay for a teacher's da 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 That's cool, but now I'm going against the dance from Idris's. Yeah. Or now I'm going against the Samuel Jackson, the Will Smiths, whoever else is in line that don't have to pay for a teacher, but now I'm in the grown man bracket now. <laughs> I'm in I'm in the NBA, yeah. not the G League. Come you on know? now. Um so that's what I, you know, I had to like figure out um throughout my acting career. So yeah. Coming up as a young man, being in the acting though, what was it that separated you from everybody else to allow you to be successful? Because you know, there's a lot of folks that jump off the porch acting, but everybody don't get into nothing 
Okay. Mm. So what was it that allowed you to be able to separate yourself from the pack and experience the success that you got? I got cut a lot as a mm. kid doing theater. Like there were certain roles or that I wasn't able to do because I probably didn't execute it as much. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, I didn't understand every no got you close to a yes. Mm. You know, so being in this career, you have to understand that you might get three no's before you get that one one point five million dollar yes. Exactly. And you on Stranger Things, Come like on now. my boy Caleb McLaughlin. You yep. know, he was really on nothing really that we've seen before that until yep. Stranger Things. But who knows how many no's he went through before he got that yes. Exactly. And same thing with me. Like I've been, I probably went on eight hundred to a thousand auditions mm. probably in my you know in my whole career. But I probably only booked ten. Wait a minute, are you serious? 800 to 1,000? Yeah. I'm thinking maybe 80 to 100. No. Okay. Keeping your head in the game after hearing no 800 to 1,000 times. How the hell did you do that, sir? You know what I'm saying? It's training at the end of the yeah. day, too. Um, so that's where you have to, like, find your, like, your, your, your where, you, where, where you'll just, like, be submissive towards the nose. Mm. You feel me? And understand that it's okay. Yeah. I'm doing something though with this no though. Yeah. I was just seen by it. That's another thing too. You don't understand that you're if you if you get that no, you were still seen by a casting director. Exactly. You were still seen by somebody that was looking for that person to portray that role. Mm -hmm. But you were just probably weren't a fit. Yeah. I have another role though. Do this one. Come on. And that's how you get that next yes. But if you just was all right, fuck it after that first no, who knows what you've got after that. How do you feel about Atlanta and the uh, television and film industry right now, man? I mean, because back in the day, you had to go to L.A. and New York to figure yeah. some stuff out. Now you can do it in your backyard. How has your career been impacted about the influx of acting in Atlanta and film in Atlanta? I mean, I don't know if it's impacting me. Actually, it has. It actually has. I filmed a lot of things in Atlanta. I filmed Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Filmed Atlanta. I filmed uh, Black Lightning. Yeah. Um, for two seasons, mm -hmm. and I feel like yeah, that that's the fact that it's, this is like the black mecca now. Yeah. You know, so it's probably cheaper to film here now. Yeah. Tax you got Tyler Perry here. Come on, man. Um, so it's opening a lot of doors for people that look like me, and I'm grateful that I could be rather than a local hire than having to go somewhere else and. You have to pay there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What the family got to say about you, though, now, man? I mean, seeing Miles knowing that, hey, man, I remember going to this man play. Now we watching this man on some of the biggest television shows ever. What is the fam talking about in this thing, Miles? <sighs> what are they doing? You know, yeah. my, well, my mom my mom is saying great things. She yeah. was my... She was in my corner ever since I started, you know, so she cries every time she sees me <laughs> on camera. Um, my dad, you know, he loves seeing my, his last names in the credits. Come on now. So he's very grateful to see that, and he's very proud of me. Um, but, yeah, what is my family doing? My little brother is acting now. Okay, then. You know, so him just seeing me on TV, now he's got... Two what two episodes on BMF now, See and he See might that. get you know he actually plays Lala Anthony's son okay. in BMF. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know the kids. Yeah, I know what you're so talking he's, about. He's the the older one. Yeah. So he might get he might have another episode this season too. So looking out for him. Yeah. Um, my mom is also acting. You know, just I guess that bug just. You it had a it domino honest. effect on everybody yeah. in my family, and I'm grateful to see that. My, me and my mom have this uh, have our own management um, uh, label called JT Management. Okay. So we have artists, rappers, mm -hmm. singers, models, yeah. actors. Yeah. Um, and we're growing right now and yes, progressing, right. and I'm really proud of her to see where she, you know, started with me and where she is now. Now, doing your journey in acting, I mean. Who have been the guys that were able to give you some game along the way that you were like, okay, this piece of advice, I'm going to take it, and it actually works in this thing? Mm. Russell Hornsby said one one um, table read, have listening eyes. Ooh. As an actor, you know, you are always paying attention to the words that you're saying or mm. how you're saying it, but the camera always picks up on that nose twitch, mm. how your mouth is, who you're looking at and why you're looking at that person. Yeah. The you know, the, the just the feeling in the eyes itself. Yeah. Things at Washington, you know, you those type of people. 
um, Don Cheeto, those type of people, you're going to see the feeling in the eyes rather than how they're saying it. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked with Michael B. Jordan before. Um, he was in my first ever feature film yeah. called Ken. Yeah. Make sure you guys watch it. <laughs> Ken. K I N. Yes, sir. Um, and long story short, um, at the end of at the, I was filming with him for like two weeks, and at the end of filming, um, I had DM'd him, and I was like, "Yo, bro, like I'm I was so grateful to just work with you. Yeah. It was an honor just being in your presence, and I can't wait to work with you again and just be like you." And he said, uh, "Be the best version of yourself, mm. and I'm gonna try my best to pro- provide the ble- best blueprint." Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? I'm say that again. He said. Be the best version of yourself, and mm. I'm gonna try my best to provide the best blueprint. And when he That's said all. that, I was like, "Man, like, I can't be you." Exactly. I, I, I was never on the wire. Yeah. I'm not Killmonger. Mm-hmm. You know. You know. I, I would love to do all those yeah. things, but you you executed it so well. I wanted to be you. Yeah. You know. I can also do make the make the same feeling for somebody else. Damn though, right. You know, but creating my own story. Exactly. So um, I took grasp to those things, and yeah. When it comes to creating your own story, though, man, how do you feel about producing your own content and directing your own content? And do you do any writing around here? I'm just now starting writing, man. Okay. Like, I had to write a skit the other day just to promote um, a comedy show that I have on June 1st. Doors open at 7. Um, show starts at 8 p.m. Um, I will be hosting. It's going to be at Atlanta Comedy Theater. I that's going to be a little promo right there. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I had to uh, create a skit for that and um, film it at the same time. But mm. before I filmed it, I had to just sit by myself and, like, all right, I, I read so many scripts. Mm-hmm. I know how it's structured. All right, let's, let, me not, let me stop overthinking it and stressing myself out. And <laughs> let me just try to just mirror that. And yeah. I ended up doing it. And it wasn't that hard, but it was... I needed to be on it though. Exactly. And um, when it comes down to even the comedy show too, or with me just being on stage, like you're saying, you being prepared and yeah. stuff. Like actors don't just get in front of that camera and just start freestyle. acting. Freestyle. Just freestyling. Yeah. And if they do, that's improvi- improvisation at the end of the scene or in yeah. between the scene, but there's still structure towards it. And um, I'm still writing, you know what I'm saying, different jokes that I think is funny. Yeah. How can I structure that? Why would I punch a song here right there? Yeah. Do I bring somebody on stage? So just the, the, that part of writing, I'm, I'm still trying to learn, too. June 1st, Atlanta Comedy Theater, man. I mean, talk to me about your comedy side, yeah. man. I mean, how much funny does Miles got in him? <sighs> He's got enough. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I feel like he's got enough. I was growing up as a kid, you know, my mom, my mom brought me to to, to the pastor one time yeah. at church, and the pastor looked at me and said, "Your child is gonna be in front of millions." Mm. As a baby, that's crazy. And um, the fact that I'm doing it now um, is is crazy. Yeah, and I just want to be exposed to it on a different level, yeah. you know, and just express myself in a different way. And I want people to know me rather than what they see. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? We were talking earlier, you were talking about Atlanta, man. I mean, what is it like growing up in this city full of stars and then now making your own star shine out here? <sighs> man, uh, it was impactful for me because I came from a youth uh, organization called YEA, Youth Ensemble of Atlanta. Freddie Hendrix, that's when I was there, sir, but continue. You was at YEA? Freddie Hendricks was uh, the director when I was there. I was there when I was like eight years old, man. Bam! Yeah, yeah, I was in Bam. there. Bam! I was in there. I was in there. No way! I was in there. So I, you know I the did, impact. I did two strong years, man, but Freddie kicked me out because I was telling I went to go play football at uh, Ben Hill. <sighs> so no, you know Debbie. There. You know Mama Debbie. All I know. Miss Andrea. All I know is Freddie Hendricks. You know. He was the director at okay. that time because I wasn't no more than like eight or nine. Oh, That's okay. when I made the transition to mm-hmm. playing that ball. But my mama put me in that thing too. Mm-hmm. And I know about that acting yes. over there with the body. Because yes. those are some of the most talented folks ever born. Kenny in Thompson came. Come on, man. Candy Bird. Come on. All those people, Shoot. man. So, like, the fact Johnny that I. Johnny was there when I was there. <laughs> Okay. The fact that I came out of there, though, you know, like yeah. that that was the impact they had on me. I was like, just, wow, they can do it. <laughs> I could do it. You know? Yeah. And I got my audition um, for New Edition Story through YEA. Oh, my God. It was open casting call, and Robbie Reed had gotten in cahoots and conversations with the, my head director at the time that yeah. was there, and uh, it was Mama Debbie, mm-hmm. and um, she... Took me in one Saturday, gave me the sides, and for two weeks we just 
studied the lines until they came to Atlanta and Robbie Reed brought me in the office just like this, probably had a camera like this and yeah. said, sing Candy Girl. <laughs> Come on, man. That's about it. And so. you had to be able to sing because that's why you ain't ever play either. You got to no. be able to do it all, sir. Sing, dance, act. So answer me this because that's what I was kind of hitting around to early on. See, my class that I was there with, it mm. wasn't no Candy Burns and no Keenan Thompson. It was just my black ass running around there <laughs> looking crazy. Okay, we didn't have a lot of stars come up out of there, but they were getting busy. B.I. came up yeah, out of there. I came up <laughs> out of there. But, it was, but I ain't get my act on, even yeah. though I am in the Andre Rising uh, documentary, Me and Wick. So y'all need to check that out, too. But <laughs> no, I got to plug my shit. Right. Plug my shit. But, uh... That's what I'm saying. Busting out of those crews of people, though, man. I mean, what are some of your counterparts from back then got to say when they're like, hey, man, that boy Miles, he was in here doing this thing with us, but, I mean, he got up through there. And what advice do you got for people that have to wait their damn turn? Man, um, well, for your first question, you know, I still know the people that I went to YEA with. Yeah. Um, my best friend that I booked a new edition story with, he played Bobby Brown. Mm. You know, so we went to Robbie Reed together. He was actually in YEA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tyler Marcel Williams. Remember okay, that then. name? Yeah. Um, I, one of my neighbors that lived with me was mm. my mentor and a volunteer at the Croc Center at the theater camp that yeah. I started doing theater. My God. And we live in the same apartment building. Christian right. Magby, he's on Flash. He's yeah. a great actor himself. He is a theater director now, um, theater teacher, all those things. Come on. And I'm moving into my apartment. And he's like, Ma, I'm like, Christian. <laughs> he's like, how you been? I'm like, yo, how you been, man? I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, Come man. Come on, man. If you didn't volunteer, if you didn't show me how to play trumpet, if you didn't show me how to play guitar, if you didn't Come just on. expose me to this this new world, man, I, I promise you I wouldn't be where I am right now, man. Yeah. And he took gratitude towards that, and I was very grateful to just, just have him just be a part of my life. Um, and then, uh, what was what was the next question you said? Well, no, you answered that. My question is, with you being an instrumentalist, yeah. are you jamming at the same time? Is some music on outside? What the hell's going on around? I feel this like thing? I could pick up. So like, I did trumpet for three years. Okay. I did guitar for two. Yeah. You know, so five years I was instrumental. Okay. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Five years I was an instrumentalist, yeah. but um, I feel like I could I could pick up back on trumpet. The reason why I stopped trumpet, crazy story. Yeah. Um, reason why I stopped trumpet was it was one time choir direct, uh, the trumpet director at the time he was mad that I was sitting and eating gum at the time. Damn. And he told me spit that gum out, boy. All right, now. Didn't like what he said, so me being the rebellious black boy that don't stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance, <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't. You feel what I'm saying? So he said, I will call your mother. We don't have to go to detention. So boom, yeah. get the whole nine, boom, boom. I told my mom what really happened. Yeah. She says, mm -hmm. if you go back, you are being submissive towards the authority that is not being beneficial towards you at your time. Man. Mm. Now, if you want to go, you know what I'm saying? If you want to leave, yep. then you understand what, what, what standards you're placing upon yourself. And I was like, all right, cool. Because it's really, like, I really don't have to, like, go back to that disrespect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I lived in Cobb County at that time. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lived the in Cobb County. The real deal. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the, ri the real. <laughs> the real. So, um, but yeah, I, lo I love trumpet, man. I love I loved trumpet. I love Dizzy Gillespie. I love Miles Davis, Davis. All those yeah. people that was inclined with that yeah. you know Jimi Hendrix with the guitar come on you know all those things do you do any singing and rapping though that's what I'm trying to get to I want to I'm I want I, I, I just love music okay. I love lyricists Nas Common you know Jay-Z you know shit Wayne I'm a Drake fan come on. you know six God till I die you know yes, sir. but um just hearing those type of music all the time and then Hearing Eric Badu and Lauren Hill, I, I, I just listen, listen to those. I listen to Neo Soul. Yeah. I don't even know if people know <laughs> <laughs> what that is. We know about it. So yeah, yeah I, I just haven't been exposed to it yet, though. Like yeah. I have been exposed to acting. Like I'm getting ready to get exposed to comedy. You know, I yeah. just don't want to dip my toes in a, such a oversaturated world right now that it, when it comes to this music industry, because everybody just doing it just to do it, and yeah. it, it just don't sound good. You know, the beat, they, the beat carrying the, the song more than the person. Come on now. You go back in the day, you hearing every word, and exactly. you writing to their words, and then you just 
you can stop listening to their words and be like, oh, there is a beat. Exactly. That's, I'm with you. And that's that's where I want to be at if I do do music, yeah. you know, and I feel like I have the platform. I feel like people will still just Damn listen right. to me just to see what the fuck I got, <laughs> you know. Um, but I've, I've punched music. I've, I've, I've did songs before and, you know, and uh, bounced some songs with some of my, you know what I'm saying, artist friends, you know, just on, on the fly and shit. Mm -hmm. But um, I never really took it serious, though. I would love to, though. I'm with you. On the personal side of things, though, man, as a young player out here in these streets, how are you handling yourself out here with all of this attention from television on your back, sir? You talking about women? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. I'm handling it, man. I'm yeah. handling it. It's hard. It, it can be hard, you know, me being 21, um, just now turning 21, too. Like, I was a child actor all my life, so yeah. just being exposed to the real world and clubs and <laughs> flight here and booking this yeah. and it's 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 a world that you have to have listening eyes with <laughs> <laughs> listening eyes and be a sponge you know but still live and learn and that's yeah. what i'm doing right now that's what i'm doing living i'm learning that. and experiencing but also taking my time though exactly i mean do you feel any pressure though too trying to juggle both worlds at the same time because i mean you still got to have a personal life but mm -hmm. then when you talk about you on set mm -hmm. sunday through wednesday someplace and then thursday through saturday someplace else how do you even find time to you know sit around and kick it with the fam and just kick it with regular folks and girls and all this other stuff i found it because that's okay. what i was doing that's what i was i was doing that before i was doing tv yeah I was with my family. I was with my friends. Mm -hmm. I was over my dad's house watching the game. Yeah. And I don't ever want to lose my humane side of me. Come on now. I don't ever want to go to a red carpet and a fan wants to get a picture of me and they go back to their mama and have a different story about my character. Exactly. I don't ever want anybody to question my, my, my judgment, you know, towards them or how I move, mm -hmm. you know, or who, or who I am. Yeah. You know, so... That's 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 my main objective in my life. I'm with you. <laughs> Have you had to deal with any crazy fans thus far, man? Crazy fans? Tch. Craziest fan I had was during the audition, and I felt like I really was Ronnie DeVoe. Like, <laughs> the, the bitch had a tattoo <laughs> <laughs> of my name on her back. Damn. Yeah, like it was crazy. Like they had the Hoagland honeys and the Truett babes. Yeah, and, and, and when I say Hoagland, it was Dante Hoagland. Dante Hoagland played Michael Bivens. Yeah, ja Jahi Winston. Jahi Winston played yeah. Ralph Tresvan. They had Miles Truett, Truett babes. And I played Ronnie DeVoe, and so on. So they had nicknames for us, mm -hmm. and, and 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 all the the fifty forty year old groupies for our twelve year old asses. You know, <laughs> what, 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 what was there at the screenings? What, what was there at the at the at the at the star giving for for um, new edition? Mm -hmm. it, it was crazy. There was one time, me and Tyler, we was at our hotel mm -hmm. with our mothers. <laughs> 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 Shit. With our mothers, yeah. um, try to get ice. Yeah. You know, we just. Hey, just hey, meet me outside. We're gonna get some ice. Come let's on. Go back down to the lobby though. Let's get some snacks. <laughs> da, da, da. That was gonna be our main, you know. Yeah. We was doing a little mission. Come on. We come back up. It's two old women. Woo and they're getting off the they're getting off the same elevator as us. Uh-huh. So, mind you, we're very known at the time. He he looks more like his character than me. Yeah. So he was more famous than me at the time. Yeah. Like when you saw him, it was like, oh my gosh, Bobby Brown. Yeah. <laughs> so they was like, Lil Bobby. I said, oh shit. <laughs> I said, oh shit. We gotta walk to our room. We yeah, gotta yeah. walk to our room. <laughs> we gotta they didn't click on no other floor. <laughs> so they must be on ours. <laughs> Damn. So yeah, yeah. we getting up, we get walking to our elevators. They're like, so where y'all going? Our room. Yeah. <laughs> our room. Literally, they know our moms are in there. What are y'all doing after this? What Are y'all going down to see the star? Da, da. Like, talking to us like we some, like, young boys. Like some, some, like, 22-year-olds that's ready to go. Like, like Train to I'm, go. I'm 12. I turned 13 February. Just, I, turned, <laughs> I turned 13 February, though, but... <laughs> Damn, I'm in the room. <laughs> but yeah, crazy, bro. They had no morals whatsoever about what the fuck was going on in that moment. They just was on go. They was always on go until it fell out. But still, again, people are still talking about that shit, and I love the impact it had. Though. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
lastly, Miles, what advice do you got for the next guy in the YEA at the tender age of eight or nine with a dream, man? Everybody has their own timeline. Mm. Don't stress yourself out chasing it. Don't shut. Don't stress yourself out chasing your own. Right now, you might be in a dot in your own timeline. And you don't know when that next dot is. Yeah. Chasing it, it's gonna stress you out. Just know you. Just know there's a next one. I'm with you. That's the main thing. Don't chase your own timeline. Everybody has their, Everybody has a different timeline. Don't chase yours. I feel that. How can these folks contact you? And is there anything that you want your fans and supporters and family to know, man? June 1st, I will be hosting at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. Doors open at 7 p.m. Yes, the show sir. starts at 8. I'm going to have four comedians. We're going to have foods, drinks. going to make sure you guys laugh and be hosted by yours truly, Miles Truitt. See you guys there. Bet it up. Yes, sir. Miles, my dog, appreciate Thank you coming you. through I this thing, man. I appreciate you too, man. Wish you nothing but the best and much success. Be high ready, yo. Shout it. Miles Truitt. Holla at y'all in a minute, man. We gone.